This program offers an example of a key stage 4 science lesson using resources linked to Ready to Learn the experiment. Based on a lesson plan you can download from Teachers TV, it features students collecting their own data and evaluating the results, looking at the methodology behind the nationwide experiment, and going on to consider how they would design one for themselves. Tim Davis is about to teach his Year 10 class at Robert Clack Comprehensive School in Dagenham, Essex. The aim of the lesson today was really for us to raise awareness with the children of the factors involved in, in them being ready to learn, but also that it's not to do with their intelligence, that actually there's a lot of factors, a lot of things that they can do to make themselves more ready to learn before they come in the room. All right, so when you come in, right, are you switched on? Are you ready to go? Are you looking at the boards? Are you got your pen out? Right, are you ready to go? Or are you come in and you're a bit like, oh, I'm a bit sluggish, oh, I'm a bit tired, I can't really, what's, what's going on? Who said what? Okay. This lesson has been designed using ideas put forward by former science teacher Matthew Tosh. We've designed the lessons so that they fit in with the curriculum. The teacher can see the, the link to their everyday teaching. So particularly at Key Stage 4, we're looking at how science works, the experimental methodology, and how you go about setting up a mass participation experiment. What other factors do you think could be involved in how ready you are to learn? Rowan? Exercise. Exercise. There are lots of options that a teacher can focus on the lesson, so we could have healthy eating, sleep patterns and general fitness. And hopefully this should be a stimulus to further classroom activity. All right, good. If you like the lesson. If you like the lesson, yeah. It all depends on mood you're in. Possibly, yeah. So frame of mind, isn't it, yeah? The stress levels. But how stressed you are, yeah. And what I'd like you to do now is answer a few questions, OK? First of all, who had breakfast this morning? And how did you get to school in the morning, right? If you have a walk, is that, does that mean you're a bit, bit more ready to learn than if you came on a bus? Put your hand up if you walked to school. We do have a sm quite a small catchment area, so probably pupils are from within a couple of miles, and some of them then can walk door to door. Um, I was pleased today actually to see that about half of them, maybe more than half, do actually walk in. Have a quick calculate how many hours you got to sleep last night. The last one we're going to do is possibly there might be a connection between how fit you are and how ready you are to learn. So say you played rugby twice a week, like two or three times a week, you might come into the lesson, it might be that you're a bit more ready to go. All right? Say that you don't do any exercise at all, right? you go from school, get in the car, you go home and you sit in front of the TV. <laughs> it might be that when you come into school, you do this as well, okay? You're not ready to go. So we wonder if that is a factor. Maybe it is. We chose to focus on exercise today because I know that the, um, the children do like to go outside and run around. And I personally believe that it is um, an important factor in how ready you are to learn. The first thing I'm gonna ask you to do, ladies and gents, is in front of you, you've got some questions, right, and they are sums, very e quite easy sums, and I'm going to time you how quickly you can do those sums, okay? So when I say go, you're going to turn over the paper, answer the sums on there. When you've finished, I can record a time for you. For the lesson, I needed to choose a task that would assess their readiness to learn, and I avoided um, the using the dot to dot, as that is essentially a motor skill and opted for a more cognitive task, which is why they were doing simple um, arithmetic. Right, now I've got some scores from you already from your um, mental arithmetic, and we're gonna test now today, what's the effect of exercise, okay, on how well or how quickly you can do these tests. 
Who thinks that maybe if we do a bit of running around and get a bit of oxygen, get a bit of blood flow going to your brain maybe, and then you came back to it, that might make you better at doing the test if you think that would be better. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Who thinks there'd be no difference at all? Be just as good again. So one, two, three, four, about half. So how might we go about testing that? If we're in pairs so. and um, one person runs and then the other person doesn't, then see who gives better answers. And... We've got some that are doing exercise, some that are not doing the exercise. Who's going to go in those groups? Put people who do sports in, like, in, all in one and then, like, people who don't do sports in the other. It's provided an important opportunity today for the children to gain confidence in data handling. Um, it's an important idea about it, um, to build their evaluation skills and also gives them an idea a little bit more about how science works. So th those of you who are doing the exercise, you're going to go out into the playground in a minute and you're going to be doing um, exercises okay, up and down five times, I think, yeah? Would be good. There and back is one. So there were other options today um, with the exercise activity. They could have been doing step-ups, for example, in the classroom, or maybe some push-ups or sit-ups or something like that. And if you didn't want to do exercise, then potentially you could look at things like diet. Another alternative could be for the children to do a matching task where perhaps they're matching a picture with a definition or a, a picture with a keyword. We're looking at the data then on the board, okay? And if you've got a yellow tag there, then you've been brave enough, okay, to, to go outside and do the exercising. Now, is there any difference, okay, between if you've done exercise or if you've just sat here, okay, or just watched? Right, and that's what we're going to look at now. And you guys are going to plot the data onto your um, graphs. There is a lot of flexibility on how you approach the how science works in this lesson. So if you feel that your class needs to develop their graph plotting skills, that's absolutely fine. Right the way through to analysing data from previous research findings. These are all important skills that scientists need. How would the class interpret those results? Does this particular result really show that uh, readiness to learn is affected by X or Y? We've got the exercise people's time, which looks shorter, and the non-exercise people. Is there any difference between these two groups of data? What I'd like to do is put your hand up if you think there is a real difference between them. No, not really. Okay. There are many directions in which to take the lesson if you would prefer to focus on previous studies including the nationwide ready-to-learn experiment itself. There really is a lot that you can milk from the how science works. So we've, we've put in some examples of previous research findings where children can read the document with the teacher and then maybe form their own inclusion. We're also looking at experimental methodology. And are there any flaws in the experiment? Because there are loads and loads of variables that are coming into this experiment. And it might be that uh, your class can see some potential flaws in the experiment. So it's a really good discussion point. Another option is designing your own experiment with particular focus on the methodology, the independent and the dependent variables. How could we test the whole school? Right, today we've just done our class. How could we scale that up to, doing the, to test the whole school? The opportunity for the children to, to be able to design their own experiments gives them a real chance to, to be like real scientists, you know, to engage in the process and to understand a little bit more, again, about how science works. This is really good practice for them at this stage. In year 11, they'll be required to do some data analysis coursework. And also in the Keeping Healthy module in the 21st Century Science, they need to understand how studies are designed, looking at sample size, looking at group size, how to keep data reliable, how to organise the test groups as well. So this is all really relevant to that. Okay, 
How many people would you, would you want involved? A hundred, and the same amount as boys and the same amount of girls. In each group? Very good, yeah. And OK, and we've, we've seen that for fair reasons, yeah? And you've asked there, how could we keep it reliable and fair? During the process of designing their own experiment, they will identify on their own the potential flaws with organising their study of that size. And so by doing it, they're working it out for themselves. So another way that we could balance the groups, how could we keep it reliable and fair to you know, make sure that each group that we test is, is the same? Jodie? There's not so fit people and fit people. Okay, split balancedly. Well done. And Sam? Do in the same place. Do the test in the same place? Yeah. Why do you think that? So it's not biased. Mm, because if you've done it in the playground and then you went and done it in the courts, it would be the courts are longer, so it would take more time. Excellent, yeah? So keep everything the same, keep everything controlled. Good, well done, guys. One last thing then from today, when you take away, right, what could you do to make yourself more ready to learn, do you think? Eat something in the morning. For breakfast? Yeah. Great idea, yeah, because food's important. Yeah. Sam? Have a decent night's sleep. Sleep is in there, yeah? I was quite pleased to see how many of the students are walking to school. Um, and I did notice a correlation, I believe, between regular exercise and how switched on they are when they come to the lesson. Um, potentially a lot more of them need to get a bit more breakfast, potentially a lot more of them need to get some more sleep. I think I'd be more ready for school if I went to bed earlier. I'd be eat in the morning, like eat food during the day. I go to bed early, I get a good hours sleep. Uh, have nice, nutritious breakfast, uh, walk to school and exercise regularly. So I'm ready for school, ready to learn. And to download resources and lesson plans, please go to www.teachers.tv forward slash experiment.